Our next guest has worked with victims of ransomware attacks by Darkside in the past. The suspected Colonial Pipeline hacking group as well as conducted preventative work with pipeline companies to reduce their exposure to this specific kind of threat. So joining us now is David Kennedy, founder and CEO of Trusted Sec, as well as a former NSA and Marine Corps hacker. You've seen this before. You've dealt with it. David, what exactly happened and, and how do we deal with it? Yeah, these these attackers um, are, are ruthless. I mean, you know, they, they kind of emerged out of 2020 and their whole, uh, you know, kind of campaign has been, you know, we're not going to target hospitals. We're not going to target critical infrastructure. We're going to go after companies and kind of steal from the rich. And, you know, they're they're very good at what they do. Um, you know, they focus on maximizing as much damage as possible. And, you know, they encrypt everything almost at the exact point in time where you really have no response back. I mean, they go after your backups. They go after everything that you're, that runs your entire company. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of these companies, the only result that they have is to pay the ransom to recover their entire business. And these are big businesses. We're talking, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars of companies um, that are impacted by ransomware. It is out of control. It is one of those things where not just DarkSide, but all of these other ransomware groups are making hundreds of millions of dollars a year um, off of ransomware, and there's no sign of any slowage happening um, at all. In fact, we've seen a 300% increase this year alone uh, in ransomware activity, and it's just happening all the time, unfortunately. I mean, this was a diehard movie plot, not not to trivialize it. I, this is a Hollywood yeah. movie plot about a hacker group going after, say, a nuclear power grid, a power grid, some other kind of critical infrastructure. What exactly then are the implications going forward if this is going to happen to a pipeline could it happen elsewhere to something even more important? Absolutely. You know, one of our, our largest concerns um, in the security industry and one of the mandates from from CISA, the Critical Infrastructure uh, Infrastructure Security Agency, is trying to protect our critical infrastructure, our grid, our water treatment facilities, you know, how we conduct day to day life here in the United States. And it's always been a major problem. And one of the ones that we know is highly vulnerable from these adversaries. You know, you look at Russia targeting China, Iran, North Korea. All of our adversaries in those spaces have high levels of, of cyber warfare capabilities on top of the organized crime groups um, that are out there from a ransomware perspective. So we're kind of caught all over the place right now from a defensive stance to really try to protect ourselves against these types of threats. And it's really on these companies like Colonial and others to, to bolster their cybersecurity and prevent these types of attacks from happening and you know, ensure that their backup strategies are secure, that they can't be encrypted. Uh, try to find them earlier in the stages and boot them out. All of these things can be accomplished, but it requires focusing on cybersecurity and technology as kind of some of those key things that we traditionally haven't seen in critical infrastructure before in the past. Yeah, David, what does it tell you that these bad actors are becoming increasingly more sophisticated? And they're not just coming from North Korea and China, but other parts of Europe and Russia as yeah. well. DarkSide is said to be based in Eastern Europe. It's, it's a major problem. And, and you talk about extradition laws. We, 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 might, we may know who these individuals are, where they live, um, you know, the, their operations inside and out. But we cannot extradite them because of, you know, being under the protection of, of the governments that, that protect them uh, for the operations that we're seeing. So it's, it's a tough position that we're at from a United States perspective of getting these bad folks off. And in addition, you know, uh, just recently, one of the largest uh, uh, ransomware groups was busted, a, a large percentage of them called Emotet. And, you know, Emotet went out of business, but literally five other ransomware groups, you know, stepped up and, and increased their sophistication and capabilities and took their spot. So you knock out one, five more, you know, surface up. So it's, it's a major problem. And, and to the last report, until we disincentivize uh, ransomware groups from actually making monetary gain, if we put sanctions in place saying you're no longer allowed to pay, it would be very painful here for the, the companies that are literally going to be uh, subjected to it. But at the same time, it would cut the entire revenue source off. Uh, from these different groups, no longer be able to establish any type of monetary gain and probably shut them down pretty quickly. So it's, it's, a, it's a balance. It's difficult. There's no easy solution for it. But one thing that, that is known is that companies have to do a better job at getting better at security. And that's one thing that is u uniform across every country across the world. Cybersecurity needs to be a, a, an important uh, aspect of a technology footprint. David, we've just got a few moments left here. You, you touched on it. There are also countries involved here. I'm not linking any one group to a country. But there are what the government calls state-sponsored actors. What exactly right. can the U.S. do with regard to its international diplomacy, Eamon Javers alluded to it earlier, to make sure this thing doesn't happen? You're absolutely correct. You know, we, we have a number of different methods available to us, not just from a cyber warfare perspective, but from a sanctions, from a diplomacy perspective, how we interact with these countries. And we have to get stern on cybersecurity. Um, cybersecurity is one of those areas where we literally have no uh, guidance, no laws, no you know, what constitutes cyber warfare and what doesn't. It's literally the Wild West right now. 
Uh, we need to structure that in place. We need to have clear laws and definitions of those. And we need to go after these countries that harbor these types of criminals uh, and go after them in a very you know, severe way that shows impact to those countries so that it stops. And that's the only way that this is going to change. All right. David Kennedy, Trusted Sec, thank you very much. We appreciate your thoughts. Thank you so much.